Hello friends, we are in New York City. I have with me Sarah and Chris, and we are currently at Central Park, and gonna have food at Tavern in the Green in a little bit, but apparently it's Saturday in the park because this place is packed. Hello. Today we're in the High Line. We walked all the way through Central Park yesterday and my body hurts. <laughs> um, and then we went out to dinner with Jeff, which was fun and I didn't film any of it and that, that's great. <laughs> um, so I'm on the High Line and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But this view... But this view is kind of awesome. I'm like... An amazingly empty street in New York. Anyway, um, the High Line is in the Lower West Side. I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. Sorry if you're from New York City and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and it used to be a raised train platform that took trains all over down here. And they actually just closed it and made it for pedestrians so it's a giant elevated walkway above the street so you can like walk for a really long way in like the air <laughs> which is cool so we're just going for a walk and checking out this area and then tonight we're gonna go see Chicago with Pamela Anderson starring as Roxy and I am very excited about that <laughs> So that's gonna go one of two ways, right? It's either gonna be amazing or it's gonna be garbage, which is gonna be amazing. So, anyway, uh, I think the worst thing that could possibly happen is that she will be fine, which is also fine. <laughs> so, yay. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go for a little walk, try to stretch our legs out after our leg stretch from yesterday. I think we walked six miles yesterday, which is very far for me, who's been trapped in my house for quite some time. So this building is super interesting. We have this like copper walkway that you can circle up, which I think is pretty neat.
Hello, Bed Chats is back. Um, so I think the last thing you guys saw was the High Line, which it turns out is a walkway that goes like, that is raised like one or two stories and then goes basically through Chelsea up in the air. And there are a lot of people on it. It's just a walkway, but it does have like green space on it. So it's kind of nice. Although it's not really for like touring. <laughs> <laughs> the way that we were doing it. There were like many people who were like trying to get places on it and it's not really wide so um, frequently I felt sort of in the way but it was really pretty and it was a nice walk. We tried to go to Chelsea Market but that did not work out because they were closed for a private event. Bummer. So after the High Line we went to a little shopping center that was next to Chelsea Market and looked around in there. Then we went to Rockefeller Center where people were roller skating and that was cool. And then over to Kate Spade where they had the cutest bag that if I was a person who carried bags more, I would buy. I have too many bags. I have so many bags and I don't carry bags. I just carry my wallet. <laughs> so it was a taxi cab bag. It was so, so, so cute. But it was also like $400. So I was like, mm, for someone who doesn't wear a bag, maybe I shouldn't be having this bag. Anyway, uh, we then went to the Nintendo store and I shockingly did not buy anything which is kind of crazy. Like I always bite my hair is nuts right now. Wow. Yeah, I usually buy stuff at Nintendo. That did not happen. I was like, I like that shirt and that shirt. And I already own that shirt and that shirt. So I didn't need to buy them. So then we came back to our place where we sleep uh, for just like a few minutes. And then Sarah and I went to see Chicago with Pamela Anderson. And my husband went to the theater to see The Northman, which is apparently his favorite adaptation of Hamlet so far. Um, it is an older than that time period, like Shakespeare myth, that's possibly Norse. So um, they told that version of the story. Um, he said it was a very violent though. <laughs> so if you're into violence and Alexander Skarsgård, and as he puts it, that chick whose eyes are too far apart, who is Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, I like her. Anyway, she, he says she's very good in that movie, and Skarsgård is also. So, and he says it's a really good movie if you like, if you like that sort of thing. So, I don't know, I might see it when it's on HBO. Um, we went to see Chicago, which Sarah and I maybe had like slightly different experiences because I've seen Chicago a lot, so it didn't bother me that like Pam, Pam, Pam did her best is what I'm gonna say. Pam did her best. Um, the rest of the cast was amazing and very good and like top-notch Chicago style and it was cool to see Pam do it. She has a great body still. Um, and she, she, she did her best. Like I thought it was, it was, the acting was pretty good. The, um, singing, they changed some of it to like modify it so there's not like belting numbers because she can't really belt. So, um, that took balls though so I'll give her that. <laughs> um, yeah. So then this morning we got up and went to Friedman's for brunch and then went to see the Guggenheim, which has some Kandinsky art in it, which was cool. I liked that part. There were some other exhibits about mask wearing, but not the kind of masks that we've been wearing for the last two years, like a, a, a different kind of mask. <laughs> um, I wasn't a big fan of that one, but... Uh, there were other people in our party who enjoyed it, so yay. Uh, the Guggenheim is a cool place to go check out. We spent way too much money in the gift shop, as we always do. And then we went to dinner tonight at an Italian restaurant that was pretty good. And then we went to see Six, which I've seen before, but nobody else in my party had seen. So that was super fun. Oh, I'm wearing a Six shirt right now. I didn't even realize I was wearing a Six shirt on the day we went to see Six. That's funny. And I got another Six shirt to take. This is my, like, clothing purchase for, <laughs> for the last six months. Because uh, the last, I think, piece of clothing I bought was possibly this. <laughs> so, uh, and that was in September when I came here last time. Anyway, tomorrow we're going to go see the Morgan Library, which is the like J.P. Morgan's library. They also have a Holbein exhibit there, so that should be fun to see all the Holbeins that Henry VIII and his wives were in, so that should be fun. And then we have yakitori for dinner, and then we're gonna go see Hugh Jackman doing The Music Man, so tomorrow's a big day. I don't know how much of it I'll film, but I'll bring my camera to see what I can get in the Morgan library. I don't know if filming's allowed, so we'll find out.
maybe this vlog is just all bed chats. <laughs> Who knows? So I am back to tell you about yesterday, <laughs> which I didn't bring my camera for just really stupid reasons. I thought we were going to the Natural History Museum and it was raining, so I was like, ah, I don't wanna lug my camera around all day. That's really dumb, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so we got, we went out for bagels and then we got to the, the Natural History Museum and there was a line around the building to get in and we hadn't even gotten tickets yet um, because they wouldn't like go through, the transaction wouldn't go through. Now I kind of think that the museum was free because it was Wednesday and so everyone was just lining up to get into the Natural History Museum for free and that's also why our transaction wouldn't go through is because it was free. Although nothing about on the website <laughs> said anything about it being free. So we don't know why our transaction wouldn't go through to get tickets. We don't know why the line was super long but anyway we took one look at it and we're like no it's A just too many people in one place and B not what we want to be doing today is like fighting through you know an, a two hour line and then walking around a museum just like packed full so so my husband was like hey there's a botanical garden in new york we should go there <laughs> so those of you who know new york know that that botanical garden is in the bronx and the those of you who know new york also know that the bronx is like 40 minutes north <laughs> of central park um so we got in taxis and we went to the botanical garden and I didn't have my camera. Man, that place is beautiful. They have a 50 acre like woodland. They have a lilac garden, um, a daffodil garden, a tulip garden, a rose garden. There's a peony garden. <laughs> that some of, some of those things were in bloom. The lilacs were super in bloom, the daffodils were in bloom, the tulips were in bloom. Um, we went into the conservatory to check out like the jungle and the desert exhibits and see what was going on there. It was really awesome like that is a beautiful botanical garden we have lovely ones in san francisco also but that was really nice <laughs> it was really nice everyone says that it's very similar to kew gardens in london um so and i think the new york one is the second biggest in the world i think is what they said it's still like I would say like you could walk around it. They have a tram that goes all the way around it and it takes like 20 minutes to go around it. You could you could definitely walk the tram path if you wanted to, um, but you'd be there all day. So like, but we were there for, well, because we didn't expect all of that, like to go there that day. So we didn't really plan very well. So we only were there for like three hours, which I would argue is not enough. Like it took us like an hour, hour and a half to even just go through the conservatory. And that's like one bu building out of many. So eek, <laughs> like, it, it was it was a lot. We didn't get to see all the things we wanted to see, but that's okay. We It gives us an excuse to go back, and I actually like that doing that on vacations is, like, leave yourself something to come back for because, like, I don't know, this trip, we decided to stay for 10 days because last time we were just like, there's no way to do all the things we want to do, and our friend Sarah, who's with us, has never been in New York before, so, like, we're also doing touristy things. Well, like, today... All of them, so my friends Stephanie, Sherilyn, uh, Chris, and Sarah all went to the Statue of Liberty. I've been there before and I kind of wanted a down day, so I didn't go because I was like, I also want to go to the Fabric District and maybe the museum at FIT. So I really didn't want to spend the time going to the Statue of Liberty when I've already been there. Um, also, because our lunch is early, they're going to be pretty rushed and I just didn't want to be rushed again today. We keep, because we're going to theater every night, which we're going to tonight, we keep having these like 4.45 or 5 o'clock dinner reservations, which means like, if you're a person who needs to sleep in a little bit, and I mean only until like 10, <laughs> 10 or 11, and not even 11 most of the days, most of the day it's 10, like, you don't really have actually that much time to do stuff by the time you like get all the way to your destination and whatever, and I know it sounds like a lot of time, it's not. You have to like account for taxis and whatever. It took us like 50 minutes to get back from, from the Botanical Garden last night to our dinner location. By the way, we had this yakitori last night that was absolutely amazing. I do not know what the place is called off the top of my head. I will try and leave it down below for you guys to let you know. I'll try to leave all the restaurants we went to down below in case anyone needs restaurant recommendations because we've eaten at a lot of very good restaurants. But that yakitori place was so good. <laughs> so so good it's also very small and then after dinner some of my friends uh went off to see the metropolitan opera who was playing 
Madame Butterfly right now. Sarah and I went to see Phantom in the Opera, which was like, it's my <laughs> 17th time seeing Phantom in the Opera. I've just like, I see it every time it's in town and it's in town a lot. I also see it like when I come to New York, I've seen it in London, you know, as you do. So and it's been out since 1988. So like 17 sounds like a really long, a lot, a lot of times, but it's been out and I saw it the year it came out. I was only 10 and I saw it with like Sarah Brightman and stuff. Uh, and I didn't know, I had no idea how special that was to be able to see that, and... <sighs> anyway, the, the notable thing about this performance was this Christine, who is on Broadway right now, is the first time a black actress has played, or a black singer, I don't know, Broadway star? Black person who can sing, dance, and whatever, <laughs> um, is performing the part of Christine on Broadway, so... We went and saw her, she was amazing, her voice is very, very good. Um, I would rate this, like, you know, I've seen it a lot, so I would rate this performance, like, somewhere between an 85 and a 90 out of Phantoms, but I have seen, like, the original people it was written for, so, like, it's not really a fair comparison. Like, if I hadn't seen that, it would probably be a lot higher. Um, so, it was a very good performance. There were a couple of people's parts that I wasn't, like, a, the best fan of, and I think the parts where, like, about a third of Phantom of the Opera, if you haven't ever seen it, is, like, all of the people on the stage are singing at the same time and they are not singing the same thing they're singing different things that like kind of cut fade in and out and like complement one another so you can't possibly hear everyone and everything that everyone's singing but I would say that the only thing that was not great about that performance was that the sound mixing was a little off because it was hard to like distinguish the voices individually when they were all singing together honest opinion okay um what's happening today so, today, I'm going to go over to the Fabric District. Um, I've taken you guys to the Fabric District twice. I will leave a link to the time I went with Bernadette and the New York one up above and below for you because I'm not going to bring my camera. <laughs> the last two times I've gone, I have definitely bought stuff, but like I felt like because I was trying to film, I wasn't looking at the fabric. Like I was trying to show you guys the Fabric District. I wasn't showing me the fabric district um so I kind of want to go without my camera um and just walk around and look at stuff I don't actually think I'm going to get very much or anything at all I don't know I have too much fabric <laughs> but I do need some stuff for the cruise um and this, and you know if you see something you should get it so <laughs> that might happen and I'll definitely show you what I got when I get back but I it's just walking around streets looking in fabric stores which I have shown you already so I'm gonna leave links to those videos for you and go do that and then I might go to FIT and if I do they have a museum there that has an exhibition called head to toe and it's like 200 years of fashion that's happening there it's like it's weirdly kind of the same as what's happening at the Met which I'm also going to that that exhibit um, it's like 200 years of fashion uh, but they'll have completely different stuff and so it's in the, and the FIT exhibit is probably a very small exhibit um, I don't know if they allow filming in the FIT exhibit. Okay, after that we're gonna go to a Cuban place, which I love, and uh, we haven't eaten, we ate brunch there earlier when, on this trip, but we haven't eaten dinner, so we're gonna go to dinner there because it's also like we didn't want to have to think about what we we're doing. And then tonight we're gonna go see Macbeth um, with Daniel Craig, so that should be super exciting. And this is a big day. That's another reason I didn't want to go to the Statue of Liberty. Is like I'm I don't want to be worn out to go see Daniel Craig do Macbeth because Macbeth is like epic. It's really long. Um, maybe it's only three two and a half hours, but you know. So I I don't want to fall asleep through that. So I feel like I I made the right choice in staying home. Okay, I will see you guys later with more stuff. We are in the American Museum of Natural History. And we are here to see dinosaurs, as you do. So that's what we're gonna do.
I do this in every travel video. I try to walk downstairs while I'm talking to you. Uh, we're gonna go see Space Stuff now because Space Stuff is cool and they have Space Stuff here. So, uh, Space Stuff. All right, this is the planetarium in here, which is a giant dome. Which I cannot possibly get into one shot, but here you go. And it's in this giant open window. And then you can go down like levels. Space things are cool. home. So I realized that I just stopped filming. <laughs> I stopped filming for a number of reasons, which I will go over here. Um, but largely because it was raining and we kept going to places that I couldn't film anyway. So I realized I never told you about The Music Man with Hugh Jackman, which was good. Really good. Um, Hugh Jackman is a better dancer than he is a singer, but he totally holds his own and it was a great show and I really liked it. 
he got nominated maybe for a Tony for that. Yeah, you'll see this light coming up and that's because I have um, like my itinerary to remind me what I was doing <laughs> on this trip because it was a heck of a last few days. Uh, we also saw Daniel Craig in Macbeth. That was amazing. It was really good except one thing which I did totally want to discuss with you guys which is that it was not costumed. I mean it was costumed but they were all wearing modern clothes. So that's a problem. Costumes matter and here's why they matter. Many people on the cast were playing more than one role. They were playing, first of all there was more than three witches which I don't understand. There was like a whole coven of witches and they played a witch and somebody else. And they didn't change their clothes when they changed characters. And they were in like modern street clothes. And everyone wore the same like socioeconomic level of clothing, if you know what I mean. Like nobody was fancier than anybody else. So like, if I didn't know Dan what Daniel Craig looked like, I would be confused about who was Macbeth, except he was probably the guy that was talking all the time. But like, many people, you're like, so are you a witch right now? Or are you Macduff? Like, who are you right now? And it was really hard to tell. And so I spent a bunch of that play <laughs> wondering what the heck was going on. Like, it interfered with me so much that I don't know if you guys have this thing, but I have this thing where, like, the first, like, five, ten minutes of listening to Shakespeare, I have no idea what's going on. I can't understand a word of it, and I don't get it. I don't understand at all what's happening. And then something clicks in my head, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I understand Shakespeare, and I instantly can completely get what's going on. It's like I'm hearing a completely foreign language that I just do not understand at all and then all of a sudden it turns into English and I'm like I don't know what happens with that and I don't know why I'm like that but it took the entire first act for that to happen because I was so confused about who everyone was because of their clothing and whatever. People. <laughs> I know you want to do a modern interpretation of things, but like you have to give people a dress, like a costume, something, and if they're going to change parts, they need to change their clothes, just at minimum. And it would be really helpful if I could tell the difference between like a sir so-and-so and like a surf. Like I can't tell the difference between those people because everyone's wearing jeans and t-shirts. <laughs> and that's kind of annoying. <laughs> so everyone in my group knows the story of Macbeth and so it wasn't like a huge deal that that was happening but like it did affect my liking of that performance. He was amazing, like the entire cast was amazing, they were so good at, at that. The performance was amazing is what I'm saying. <laughs> but not having costuming really threw me off, took me out of the play like so many times and uh, it's not my jam, it's not my jam. I wouldn't, I would prefer, even if you're gonna have modern clothes, to have like people in Gucci and people maybe not in Gucci <laughs> or something to let me know who everyone is basically so that when they walk on stage I can understand who they are in relation to everybody else. If you're if you're gonna have a whole bunch of people be witches, give them a robe to throw on over their clothes. Like just it's not really hard to make a witch look like a witch. It's really not hard. So especially like a Shakespeare witch. <laughs> so like yeah no. It wasn't my favorite thing. Okay, so the last thing you saw was Dandy Wellington. We went to see him Friday night. We had an excellent meal um, at a Mexican place in Tribeca, and he was playing literally across the street at the Roxy Hotel in Tribeca, which was an amazing experience. I love. I, I was sitting kind of like far away from where the band was, but I kept on like going over to this couch that just happened to be in front of the band, and like everybody who was on the couch just kept like letting me sit there and film. So I actually filmed a whole bunch of stuff, but. Um, the sound quality for that kind of musical gig while people are like talking behind you isn't great on a camera like this. I really need a shotgun mic for that, so noted. <laughs> Gonna order one of those. Anyway, so I did, the song you saw was actually one he dedicated to me in my group because we are from San Francisco and that song is about San Francisco, so. <laughs> um, it was a great time, it was great to see Dandy. I saw his significant other, which was amazing. Darlene is an amazing person, so it was really nice. And like the next time I'm gonna see them <laughs> is in London on a boat, so yeah. But um, it was a great show, we had a really good time, the food was really great. Okay, so Saturday I went to the Met, and that was like a no filming situation. It was also pouring down rain, and we had to stand outside in the rain like in this security line to get into the Met. Luckily I had pre-bought tickets so our line was like slightly shorter but we still stood outside and like I'm from California we don't have rain. <laughs> it was pouring like we were just 
soaked. I had an Arcteryx jacket on, which is supposed to be like waterproof. Mm -mm, no, there was water in there. Every every crack that it could get into, it went into. We had an umbrella. I bought an umbrella at the place, like, because I didn't want to stand in the rain with no umbrella. And there was a guy selling umbrellas for like ten bucks, so I bought an umbrella. Don't even care. And we had an umbrella, and I was still soaked. Um, my purse that I would have been carrying my camera in was just just wet. It was just just wet all day. <laughs> so like, I'm real glad I didn't bring my camera in a lot of ways. Um, the Met exhibit for Anthology of Fashion was, uh, they had some amazing stuff. They had modern clothes. They had an entire room that was staged by Martin Scorsese and it was the Frank Lloyd Wright room. So the whole room is, first of all, just stunning. You walk up to the room, it looks like a house from the outside and you're walking along the outside of the house and you can see windows and you can see into the room and then you go around the door and go into the Frank Lloyd Wright room which is amazing in and of itself because it looks like a Frank Lloyd Wright house. It's just, yes. <laughs> and then they had the entire exhibit was Charles James in that one room. So yeah, at, uh, Autumn DeWild, I think her name is, she did the movie Emma 2020, the one like I'm obsessed with. She did Regency Rooms. Yes, so good, so good. There was George Washington's inauguration jacket, which was amazing. To just it's the first thing you see and people just like streamed past it and weren't even looking at it. they were like 18th century coat and I'm like hi <laughs> this is painted in all the paintings of George Washington this particular coat <laughs> and then in the back corner of that first room because it's so I don't know if anyone here has been to the Met before but in the Met they have an entire 18th century house like it's just built into a wall and then you can walk into it <laughs> and it's an entire house inside the building it's crazy so anyway, I walked in to that front door, there's the George Washington coat, and then in the back corners, there are two coats. Um, one of them uh, was a Brooks Brothers coat that was given to someone, and then the other coat that was there, everyone just kind of like glanced at and walked by because it was in pieces, like the sleeve was off, and it just kind of looked like meh. It was the coat that Abraham Lincoln got shot in. So like I walked over to it and I'm like, what is this thing? And I looked at the, the tag and you had to, there was like a video screen that was like showing text about stuff. So I kept reading it and I'm like, oh my God. And the reason that the sleeve was off was because at some point, so uh, Mary Todd Lincoln gave the jacket to his footman after he got shot in it, which I'm like, okay. And then they let people take pieces of the lining as like mementos or ephemera to have. So people were taking pieces of the lining out until the sleeve essentially detached itself. The room by Tom Ford was just bananas. It was all of these chrome mannequins that were in parkour formation, having like individual sword fights, like kung fu style with each other. They were like flipping around and stuff in midair and all these like modern, like, you know, Givenchy, uh, uh, Ralph Lauren, like all those kind of people, Chanel, you know, high-end fashion designers, their dresses were on the mannequins in this giant oval room with all these fights going on. There's probably like 10 pairs of fighters, maybe maybe eight to 10 pairs of fighters in this thing. <laughs> it, it was just off the chain. So there was a lot of famous people who directed it. There was Sofia Coppola did a couple of rooms which were like haunting. <laughs> so um, anyway, I did take pictures of the FAT exhibit that I went to um, obviously the Holbein exhibit that you guys saw, I also took photos, and of the, there was actually two exhibits in the Met that were fashion, and I took pictures of all of them, so anyone who's on, a, on, my, on my Patreon right now is getting emails that will send you a link to a Google Docs folder with all the pictures I took. Some of those pictures are heckin' grainy, because <laughs> all I had was my phone, and it was real dark, and people were kind of like pushing around in there. Anyway, so that was the Anthology of Fashion, which is part two of this, like, extensive exhibit that they're putting on about fashion. Part one is called the Lexicon of Fashion, and they still had that also set up, so we went down and looked at that. Now, I went with um, my friend Jeff and my friend Nami, and Jeff said that they had actually switched out some of the Lexicon of Fashion items, so apparently they're rotating pieces in that, in that collection in. So if you've seen that before and you're in New York, you could go back and see it again and you might see different stuff. So anyway, that was really cool and we had a really good time. And then we went to a restaurant called Maison Pickle, which I went to last time 
that I was in New York City with everybody. It's in the last shot of that video if anyone saw the New York video last time. Um, it's a really good restaurant. <laughs> it's very tasty. Um, we had this thing that was basically like French toast with fried chicken and like honey maple bacon and syrup on it for dinner. Ugh, it was amazing. That place is just so good. Uh, I've also, earlier in the week, we ate at a place called Maison Harlem. If you're ever in Harlem, highly recommend that. I'm gonna put, like, I think a lot of the food places that we ate, I'm gonna put down below in case anyone wants to, who's in New York wants to do that, or if you're going to New York. If you're ever going to New York and you want some recommendations, hit me up. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll give you a list, because, man, we did some really good places. Anyway, that day was already a little weird, um, because a person in our group, because we had more people than were just in the people that you saw earlier in this, we had a bigger group with us. One of the people in our group got COVID. <laughs> and so we had to deal with that situation and like change some of our plans around and like notify everyone we'd seen and everyone we were gonna see that that happened. Um, everybody that didn't have it started testing immediately. So we were testing once or twice a day before and after we went out just to make sure we were making sure that we were, I mean, we were already masked at all times. I mean, guys, you guys know me. Like <laughs> I was masked like, in a cab, in a public place of any kind. If I, even if I was outside, like there was a one day we were in Central Park, we were outside, it, there was too many people. I was like, nope, I'm wearing my mask. <laughs> like, if I didn't have a good, like, giant realm, the only, like, source of contact would have been eating. Anyway, I've since got a PCR test and we are negative, both, both Chris and I are negative, so everything was fine. But <clears throat> it was a bit of a, like, <laughs> that day was a bit of a, a frustrating, like, run around we had to like rearrange a bunch of stuff and also like we felt really bad for our friend who we did leave behind in New York. I tried to stay, they were like no you can't do anything anyway, like I can't hang out with them so I would just be there for moral support spending a lot of money and they were like that was that's stupid, they're coming home in the next couple days so it's fine. Anyway, <laughs> we had an extra seat to the show we saw that night which was Hades Town. So Hades Town is a trip. <laughs> it's a really good show, I highly recommend it. It is um, a story about Persephone and Hades and then Orpheus and uh, Eurydice and if you don't know those stories they're like Greek myths um, so they're pretty easy to figure out the story but how they tie those together in like this stage play is pretty cool it's a musical the music is really good it's um, like New Orleans jazzy I like I loved it I thought it was a really good show it's gotten a lot of um, notice and a lot of awards uh, so highly recommend it if you're if you can see Hades Town, it's real good. So we did that, and then Sunday we got up, took another test, <laughs> came out negative, and then went to Brooklyn to see James McAvoy, who was doing Cyrano de Bergerac. We have seen this in London. I think there's might be a vlog about that trip. I'm not sure. So it was really good. We had a great time with it. We came home. We went to EAK Ramen. So good. That's in Restaurant Row. There's another one, I think, downtown in New York, and I think there's one in Los Angeles for anyone who's watching this. It's in LA. There's a place there called EAK Ramen. Highly recommended. Very good ramen. It's like, it rates real. I, I scale, like I have a scale for my ramen, right? And I, I rate things. So I rate the broth, I rate the noodle, I rate the egg, I rate the chashu, because I only get tonkatsu. <laughs> anyway, so it, it gets like a 9.5. Like, I love EAK Ramen. They're just like, base EAK ramen is so good and then they have spicy and they have all kinds of other things you can get too so that one's good so we went there and then we went to the movie theater <laughs> that night after we we packed up for a bit because we were leaving the next day and um we went to the movie theater and we saw everything everywhere all at once which is Michelle Yeoh in a film that's also a multiverse film um I'm not gonna really say much about it other than you should go see this movie. Like, it's an all Asian cast, James Hong is in it, it's a mind bender, it is sweet, you will cry, you will laugh so hard, you will be like, what is even happening, did I take drugs? Like, it's so good, it's so, so good, and like, this is one of those films that I think, like, we should push and put money into because, <laughs> like, it's pretty innovative and I really liked it, so it was really good. Um, so the next day, which was, so that was Sunday, the next day was Monday, we weren't leaving until 5 o'clock, so we got a late checkout at like 1, we went downstairs and put our bags away, and Chris actually just hung out, uh, we got some food, and then Chris just hung out in the lobby, uh, we were already like, kind of weirded out about the whole COVID thing, we of course tested again that day and stuff, I went to the fabric district, got a little bit more stuff, so I have a few things to show you, and I'm gonna do that in just a second. And then, anyway, we flew home, 
delay after delay after delay after delay. Like we, we got there, our plane was delayed. Then we had to change gates. Uh, it got delayed again. We got on the plane. It was delayed while we we're on the plane. We flew, we landed. It was delayed going from the tarmac to the gate. <laughs> Like, and then we flew into San Francisco, so we had like an hour drive home after that. So we didn't get home until 2 a.m. on Tuesday, basically. And then we got up the next day and went and saw Doctor Strange, because I was like, I'm sick of not being able to look at the internet, because of spoilers. So I wanted to look at it. Okay, so I'm gonna get my stuff out together so that I can show you what I got in the fabric district, and then I will check out from this video. Okay, this is my pile from the first day that I went out, and... My goal while I was in New York was to find fabrics to make some of the shirts and things for my boat trip, my cruise. So um, I'm in the realm of I don't know what fabric types these are, I'll have to burn them, but I needed some slinky fabrics. So I got this very drapey blue situation that I think I'm going to make this top out of because it needs a lot of drape up here at the top. And I do not think, I'm gonna, I'm obviously not gonna do contrasting, I'm just gonna do it straight. And I'm not gonna do it this long, and I'm not gonna do it this short, but somewhere in the middle. So I got this fabric, which is very drapey and very shiny, and I don't know how to work with, but does have a crepe back, which is gonna help, because I don't, I don't really know how to sew this. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, I got this in blue, and it is beautiful. Just... And I also got it in this rust colored? Would you call that rust? No, copper? Copper? We're gonna call this copper. Uh, because I thought this was also lovely. And I thought, you know, if I make two shirts out of the same pattern, that's totally fine. Um, in fact, that's probably a good idea, <laughs> so, because I can get one down and know what I'm doing. So, that's what happened there. There's a little off cut. I also got this silk charmeuse for this pattern, which I thought would go really well. So it's in this beautiful peacock color. It's a little bit more green than it's coming off on camera. The camera's showing it very blue. This I just got because it was in available and I was thinking about my Halloween dress, so there's that. Uh, and then I found these. <laughs> and I, they're both gold but they're different, two different tones of golds. So this one's like a silvery gold, and this is a deeper, darker, richer gold, and it's that schmushy material. And I think the really only really difference, I mean, they're the color difference, but also this one is backed in black, and this one is backed in white. They didn't, I would have just gotten this one, but they didn't actually have as much as I needed. I think I might make a caftan out of this. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's too much, but I don't know, those were popular in the 20s, and feel like I would look like I guess I'm getting like Mercutio from Romeo plus Juliet vibes off of it it's also very like floppy and drapey but still very fun so yeah and I just thought that this color was actually like really beautiful I might make one of those shirts out of this like I don't know can I make this out of that I don't, I don't know so I have a, I have like four something yards of this but I have like I think seven of this for a caftan so We'll see. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. And I might make this cap down and be like, uh, no, that was a huge mistake. And that's okay, because this wasn't that expensive. <laughs> so that might happen. Okay, then I was at the Met, and you guys may have seen from, if you guys follow Jeff, he made this, like, absolutely spectacular Korean coat out of this beautiful twelve. And I was like, well, where did you get that? And he said, New York designer fabrics. So I went over there. <laughs> And I was like, can I get some and make a jean jacket and then we can be twinning? And he said, heck yeah. <laughs> so I got some to make a jean jacket or something else maybe, I don't know. But it's definitely not going to be his awesome Korean coat because I am not that awesome. But I am a different kind of awesome. And then I saw this. Which, obviously this needs to be a Regency overdress. Like, very clearly. And so there's some of this now. So then I stopped on my way home at a different place and I found this guy which looks like it's see-through as you can see but it's very much not which is kind of awesome and I really liked the eggplanty stripes and the shininess of it so again maybe this one 
unclear. Not sure. Not sure what's going to happen with this guy yet. But I bought enough to make a shirt. Even if I get a different pattern, I got this. So I do have at least like five or six shirts going at this point for this cruise. So I feel fairly solid about that. Okay, so the next mission after Secret Pants, which is what I'm working on right now, I'm in the middle of it. <laughs> I like left in the middle of that project, is to go get some like super cheap drapey fabric, like whatever I can get, like in the dollar bin or whatever, and make both of these patterns up to see, make sure I like them, make sure they're not too difficult for me, make sure that they fit well and they look good and they're gonna look good with jeans or pants or whatever I wanna wear with them, because like I want them to have a life after this cruise. So obviously they gotta go with jeans. <laughs> So I'm going to check out what what's what. I'm going to make the different lengths on the one skirt because it has this, what would you call that, a peplum? That bottom part there? Maybe a peplum? Sure. It doesn't flare out like I imagine the peplum, but maybe it's still called that. Anyway, I don't know what length, so i got to figure that out. So I'm going to make some, some samples, so that will be the next project that I'll be working on after this. But all of these fabrics have like a definitive target, except maybe one, the like second squinchy fabric i haven't figured out what i want to do with that yet but i love it <laughs> so yeah we're we're foraying into fabrics i've never done into time periods i've never done it's gonna be very exciting for the next few months <laughs> hopefully like i get heavily motivated to sew constantly so that these things just get done and out out of the way and finished and stuff these were not expected in my plan for the year because this whole trip was not expected <laughs> But that is how life works and we're being flexible. <laughs> so that was my New York trip. I hope you enjoyed the little mostly talking through it because that is basically what happened. <laughs> the Holbein exhibit was a thing you got to see. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you made it to the end, leave me a comment that says to the end. Also tell me how you are, what you're doing. If you're new here, leave me a comment, introduce yourself. I love meeting new people and talking to the people who are new to the channel and tell me what brought you here and what you're into and all that kind of stuff. If, you, if this is your first video of mine, this is not indicative. No, it's that's a lie. That's totally indicative. My videos are chaos. <laughs> so yeah, just come along for the ride. Anyway, I hope you're all having a great week and I will see you guys next time in another vlog, hopefully with super pants. Okay. Bye guys.